Hi everybody, it's Kelly Russell, the Rock Your Joy Coach. Thanks so much for being with me. Welcome to my channel. My topic today is forgiveness. So uh, specifically, A Course in Miracles workbook lesson 134, Let Me Perceive Forgiveness As It Is. And so in A Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles has a very different definition of forgiveness than the world does. So the world's definition of forgiveness and, and what we are taught is, is you should forgive people when they do you wrong, when they hurt you, when they betray you, when they, they do something that is wrong or terrible or harmed you in some way, you should forgive them because it's you're being the better person, you're taking the higher road because you're it's the right thing to do because of course in miracles tells you you should forgive people or or because your religion says that you should and what all those things have in common is that they're keeping you believing in the guilt of another person. They're keeping you focused on the fact that they did something to you, that they are guilty, and but that you are choosing to see it differently and overlook their guilt. And what A Course in Miracles has a very different definition of forgiveness. And you can find it in the part of the Course in Miracles that is the very beginning of the workbook part two. And there's a section there right before the workbook part two starts where it talks about what is forgiveness. It says forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sin and make it real. It sees there was no sin, and in that view, are all your sins forgiven. So, it's basically saying it never happened. And this is an area that a lot of people struggle with in A Course in Miracles. What do you mean it never happened? I, you know, it obviously happened. I have the bruises to prove it, or I have the, you know, the divorce papers, or I have the video evidence, or... You know, it did happen and we're very is insistent that something actually happened and the person really is guilty and did something wrong. And yeah, in, in the dream of the world, there's all kinds of things that are done wrong in the dream of the world. There's, there's, I mean, I'm not even going to try to name things that are done, but pretty much every expression of, a, of lovelessness in this dream is something that is cause for forgiveness because why it is a dream it's an illusion that is the the central teaching that a course in miracles attempts to teach is that there is no world so if you begin with that concept that there is no world then it follows that anything you would be holding somebody in guilt over that happens in this dream or this illusion isn't real either. And so how do we do that? How do you practice forgiveness? And, and why should you? Well, so why to practice forgiveness is because there are a lot of benefits to doing so. It, the Course in Miracles teaches that you can't hold another person in guilt without holding yourself there as well. And so if you don't want to end up punishing yourself because you're holding yourself in a place of guilt. That's what we do is when we, when we feel like we're guilty, we punish ourselves. It's a, that's a concept we know in the psychological field. It's what people do. And so we have, we've found these ways to set up punishments for ourselves since before we were even appearing to be born into the world. We have all these experiences that we would call negative experiences that can be painful. And we've set them up to punish ourselves because we believe that we are guilty of separating from God and we believe that we deserve to be punished. The more we practice forgiveness, we are literally brought into a different dimension of time and space 
and moved along that continuum of punishments that we've set up for ourselves. And those, they are collapsed as we practice forgiveness. And as that ego is unwound and undone, those opportunities that we've set up for ourselves, those negative experiences literally are collapsed. And so we do not have to journey through as many of them. And they keep those, that number keeps reducing the more that we practice forgiveness. So we are literally, as we practice, we are, we are reducing the number of negative experiences that we will have in the world. So that's one reason, if I think, to practice forgiveness. It's one of the reasons why I do it. And another reason is because following that same collapsing of time concept, we appear to reincarnate over and over into the world. And I hear people say all the time, I don't want to come back here. I don't want to have any more lifetimes. I want to be done with this. I want to reach enlightenment. I don't want to have to keep doing this again. Well, so that's a dream too. You know, we're not really incarnating because there's, there's, we're not, this world is not real, but we are certainly having serial lifetimes in this dream. And so the way to stop having the serial lifetimes, again, is the more you practice forgiveness and the more that you are collapsing time, you are collapsing those opportunities to have those negative experiences that plays out in collapsing time to the point where you have completely unwound the ego and you've reached a state where you see your brother as innocent and you see yourself as innocent all the time. You have no more judgment, no more condemnation, and you're just able to see with love. And when you're at that place, then there is no more belief in the world of time and space. And so then you will not be continuing to have the experience of coming back into the world in another incarnation. So those are two of the best reasons that I know of to practice forgiveness. And what is the practice? How do I practice forgiveness? The practice is number one, I forgive you or I forgive this situation because I remember there is nothing to forgive. So the first step is recognizing that there is nothing to forgive. The second step is because I remember that I'm dreaming an illusion that the ego mind made up. And so you're acknowledging that it's a dream. So you're willing to forgive and you're acknowledging that it is a dream that your ego mind made up. And the third step is, and I ask to see this differently and I release it to spirit to be healed. And that is the three-step process. And when you practice that on a regular basis, it is amazing the kind of things that change because projection are projecting our own unconscious guilt, believing we separated from God onto the world causes us to see guilt and, and judgment and people, people doing things and behaving in such a way in the world so that we believe that they deserve our judgment and our condemnation. It's coming from a place of projected fear. When we project love in the form of forgiveness, we are then changing our projection. So our perception changes and we are able to see love reflected back to us. And so situations change. People seem to act differently. The world becomes more loving and you just have less things that you're carrying any kind of judgment or, or condemnation or resentment about. And so you just experience a happier dream. So if you liked what you heard today and it was helpful or, you know, you want to hear more, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for being with me today. And also click the link below, head over to my website. There's a couple of free gifts over there. There is a meditation for guidance and that you can download. And also there is a two hour workshop on being happy. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.